Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Free Life Online. If you're tuning in for the first time, my name is Richie. My wife, Leanne, and I are the pastors here at Free Life. Just so honored you would join us today. Well, as you can see, once again, I'm not coming to you from the Free Life Sanctuary. I'm actually coming to you from a power circuit station because we're continuing our Contagious series today. And I'm uh, gonna talk to you a little bit about the power of transporting the love and the power of Jesus Christ into our community. You know, Paul said in Romans 1.16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation. And as I began to think about this power station, I thought about the fact that, you know, it's not the real power source. It comes, uh, it, it gets its power from a power plant. And the power plant transports it to the power station here. And then in turn, the power station transports the power into the homes and the community and the businesses. And because of that, our city has light, our city has heat and air, and our city just has some of the comforts of life. You know, plug in a toaster, plug in a hair dryer. Everything's better because this power station is not keeping the power to itself. You know where I'm going, but it's transporting the power to the city. So should the body of Christ be. We come to church each week. We receive power, right? When we worship together and we pray together, hear God's word. We're in the body of Christ. We're fellowshipping. And then we take that power outside of our four walls into our communities, into our neighborhoods, into our homes, into our families, into our jobs each week. And we transport that power into our city. And because we don't keep it in the four walls, our city has light. Jesus said, you're the light of the world. Our city has, you know, we go into the communities and because of our prayer and because of our positive confession, we can call things that are not as though they were, right? And we can dictate the climate of our community. And on top of that, we just make things better. I thought about the words of Jesus in Acts chapter one and verse eight. You know, Jesus just died on the cross. He just rose from the dead and he's talking to his disciples. And he said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, but you won't keep it to yourself. You also shall be witnesses in your city, in your region, and the other most parts of the world. We get that word power comes from a Greek word dunamis, where we get the word dynamite. Basically what Jesus was saying is, you shall receive dynamite when my spirit comes on you, and you shall be witnesses. You won't keep this power to yourself, but you'll share it in the love and the power and the grace of God to others as well. That's exactly what Jesus wants for our lives. He said, I know you've been affected by my ministry. I know you've been affected by the miracles. I know you've been affected by the healings. You've been affected by the cross. You've been affected by the empty tomb. But now it's time for you to be infected. And of course, he was prophetically speaking of Acts chapter 2, when they were all together in one mind in one place, and they were filled with power. And because of that, 2,000 years later, we're still talking about this love. You know, I thought about many of the radical religions around the world that will, uh, you know, give up their life in the name of their false gods. And, you know, a lot of things they do, the church can take note of and learn from, actually. You know, one of the things they do is they teach their kids at a young age, and then they teach that generation that there are great rewards for serving their God, false God, but their God. And then they strap their cell phone at the right time in the come of age with power. And then they go outside of their mosque or their religious center. They get around as many people as possible. They don't blow themselves up in their, in their mosque. They go out into the community and then they blow themselves up and die. And in many ways, the church should take note. We should teach our kids at a young age. Proverbs 22, six says, train up a child in the way they should go. When they're old, they won't depart from it. We should be teaching this generation that there are great rewards of serving Christ. Hebrews 11, verse six, he is a rewarder of those who will diligently seek him. Jesus said to his disciples in Matthew six, if what you do in private, I will reward you openly. We too should be strapped with power when we go out in our community through prayer, through worship, through the word of God, through positive confession. And then we got to go outside of our four walls. You know, we don't need to blow up. And I'm all about having good church. I love good preaching. I love good worship. But the reality is Sunday mornings in church is the time that we receive power only so we can go out and transport power to our community. 
And then I thought the, about the fact they're willing to die. Now, Jesus is not asking for us to die for him. He said, I've already taken care of that part. I just need you to live for me. But I do need you to die to your flesh. I do need you to f die to your what makes you feel good. I do need you to die to your desires, your past, you know, lie, your guilt of your past, uh, insecurities, pride, ego, selfishness. I need you to die to those things so I can use you to do this very thing that I'm calling you to do.